Hi, we're group three of Anatomy and Physiology. We studied botulism for this project. Hi, I'm Darius Dawkins. I'm Jacqueline Clark. Stephanie Biancus. And my name is Brian Trong. Hope you enjoy! Listen up, we have a new patient, 25 year old female, no past medical history. What are her symptoms, Dr. Clark? Uh, this patient came into the emergency room this morning at 3 a.m. presenting with nausea, vomiting, and abdominal cramps that started at midnight. While in the emergency room, the patient started to present with difficulty swallowing, dry mouth, double vision, dysarthria, and fatigue that started at 6 a.m. Yeah, despite IV fluid treatment and anti-nausea medication at 4 a.m., patient symptoms continued to worsen. She also had drooping eyelids, slurred speech, and started having minor paralysis of her bilateral facial muscles. Diarrhea? No, she has not had a bowel movement in over 12 hours. So what could be causing this, guys? Stroke. Guillain-Barre. Myasthenia gravis. Well, she's having slurred speech, facial paralysis, and drooping eyelids. Could it be a stroke? Hemorrhagic strokes can cause nausea, vomiting, and facial symptoms. And a human stroke could also uh, cause similar symptoms. But there's no trauma indicated in her history, which is the number one cause of hemorrhagic strokes, or blood thinners, which makes someone susceptible to one. We already did a CT, which ruled out a hemorrhagic stroke, and an ischemic stroke wouldn't cause bilateral facial paralysis. Also, she has no history of hypertension or drug abuse, which would elevate her risk uh, to have a stroke. What about Guillain-Barre uh, syndrome? That would explain some of the paralysis. However, GBS is ascending paralysis. Wouldn't you expect a patient to have weakness starting in her extremities rather than her face? How about myasthenia gravis? So stroke. We have Guillain-Barre. And myasthenia gravis. Okay, myasthenia gravis causes similar symptoms in the face. However, it takes months and years for symptoms to become noticeable. These symptoms are too rapid. Also, myasthenia gravis is very specific about which muscles it affects. It would cause, it would cause her generalized fatigue. What did she eat yesterday? Um, I think she mentioned she had some bad tasting canned corn yesterday. Do we know who was with her? Oh yeah, her friend, had, her friend did have lunch with her yesterday and is actually down in the emergency room with nausea, vomiting, and facial symptoms uh, right now, and abdominal pain as well. Why didn't you say that before? Food born botulism! I was eating that! Not anymore, you're not. Trust me, your, th your thighs will thank me. All those cars are going straight to your posterior. What is the pathogenic treatment center for foodborne botulism? Foodborne botulism is caused by the botulinum toxin, which is produced by anaerobic C. botulinum, which can be found in improperly canned foods. The botulinum toxin binds to the cholinergic nerve terminal, where the nerve cell then uses endocytosis to envelop it. It is then translocated to the cytosol, where it binds and cleaves snares. Snares are integral to the exocytosis of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine into the neuromuscular junction. If acetylcholine is not released into the junction, then the muscle will not contract. In plainer terms, botulinum toxin inhibits the release of acetylcholine into the junction, thereby preventing contraction of the muscles. If the muscles are unable to contract properly, then they will become flaccid, which explains the bilateral facia, facial paralysis, droopy eyelids, and slurred speech. Her skeletal muscles are unable to contract properly. 
for once, clock is making sense. Strong, what are the treatments? If it was wound botulism, we could give the patient like penicillin, uh, chlorimacetin, and cleosin. But since it's a uh, food botulism, we'll just give the patient um, uh, botulinum antitoxin. It's a heptavalent antitoxin. Uh, we'll have to administer it, administer it slowly by IV infusion via volumetric uh, infusion pump. We'll first start her off at 0.5 ml per minute for the first 30 minutes just, just to minimize any allergic reactions. If there is no infuse um, related reaction, we can go ahead and increase it to one ml per, per minute for the next 30 minutes. And then we can just go ahead and just do two ml per minute for the rest of the treatment. And we'll also give the patient some medication to induce vomiting and also an enema to remove any contaminated food still in her gut. And we'll also have her on intensive medical, medical and nursing care. And if, if it gets too serious, we'll intubate the patient and put her on ventilator if she starts showing signs of respiratory distress. So what's the prognosis? Well, botulism is really rare. Without modern medicine, uh, foodborne, uh, botulism has like a 60 to 70% death rate because of the potential compromise of the respiratory system. Before 1950, people generally had poor outcomes with foodborne botulism post-poisoning. And with the advent of modern treatments, the mortality rate actually decreased to 5 to 10% in developed countries. And older individuals, such as the above age of 60 years, are like at more risk of mortality. But since our patient is young, she has a better chance of coming out of this alive. So um, long-term recovery is still relatively long with the lingering fatigue, weakness, dry mouth, and shortness of breath of about one year, but this could be helped along by therapy. Doctors, the patient is in respiratory distress. We'll go. Current research on botulism. What if I told you botulism can sprout in natural environments, like for instance, your backyard or playground that your kids play on? Well, in Recent research, we have been enlightened on certain possibilities. Decomposition of plants, algae, and animals creates environments that facilitate the growth of botulism, which may enter the food webs, leading to intoxication of animals. We focus on the occurrence of botulism in non-clinical environments and examine the growth and factors associated with botulism outbreak. This article is researched to help inform the population of how botulism occurs naturally. Botulism is extremely rare and new research is being conducted every day to find the cure for the disease. No one knows exactly what the cure is, but with heavy research, we can hopefully find a cure. Um, there are clinical trials being tested and the results are stated as a randomized control trial met with the criteria. We found no additional trials when we updated the searches in 2013. Potential medical treatments included botulism antitoxin, human-derived botulism immune globin, and plasma exchanges. The treatment of infant botulism included 59 tr treatment participants as well as 63 controlled participants. The control group received a control immune globin which did not have an effect on botulism toxin. In this trial, there was some violation of attempt to treat principles and possibly some in-between treatment group imbalances among those participants admitted to the ICU. But overall, we judged the risk of bias as low. There were no deaths in either group, making the treatment affected on the mort mortality rate. It stated that botulism can sprout around any environment due to certain criteria. It can even affect infants at a young age. And an article gives you a brief insight on how botulism can affect infants. Infant botulism occurs in infants between 1 and 11 months of age and result in the veto production of neurotoxin by botulism. The clinical spectrum ranges from carriers through various diseases of paralysis to sudden death. The classic clinical presentation of a child with constipation, general weakness manifested by poor head control, poor suck, and weak cry. The treatment is supportive in an intensive care setting Antibiotics, antibiotics and antitoxins are not indicated. The mortality is less than 3% in hospitalized patients and complete recovery can be expected. 
The environmental and dietary factors associated with infections are discussed. The, br the brief abstraction can give you the insight on infant botulism. So botulism is really scary in adults and infants and it causes family and friends to worry. It's a rare but dangerous risk that needs to be monitored closely for future outbreaks.